Hi, my name is Desmond. Today I want to talk about high-speed photography and in particular shooting water balloons. Anyone who knows me and the type of photography I like know that I like to blow things up and um, high-speed photography can give some really rewarding results. The first thing people usually say to me when I show them high-speed photos, they say, yeah, but you must have a really good camera to do that. Hello, Peggy. What do you think of my photograph? You must have a really good camera. You're a bad girl. And that's the biggest misunderstanding with high-speed photography. It's not about having a fast camera. If you look at 99% of high-speed photography images, the background is black. What does that tell you? There's no ambient in the picture. You're totally using the flash to freeze the image. For these comments about having a really fast camera, I have a video that I want to show. Some timing tests that I did a while ago, back in the days the Casio, I think it was the FH100 came out with a camera that could do up to a thousand frames per second. Now have a look at these images of water balloons getting shot. Um, we have one at 120 frames a second. Can you imagine a camera that could shoot at 120 frames per second? Do you think that's going to capture a bursting water balloon? We have 420 frames per second. That barely catches anything interesting. And we have a thousand frames per second. You can only just begin to see the pattern of the water balloon bursting at a thousand frames per second. So you probably need a hundred thousand to a million frames per second to actually capture a whole sequence of events of the, of the bursting and then select a frame from there if you want to go through a million images. So with regard to the fact that there's no ambient in the background. I want to show you something I called the trick shot I did a while ago. And what I did was I took an eight second exposure and I used a small aperture and a low, lowest ISO I could use to get no ambient in the background. And in the first image, we've got a water balloon that's shot, sound activator switch goes off, freezes the motion of the balloon bursting. And then I stand next to it with a toy gun and the flash on the camera fires. It's on rear curtain flash, so it flash fires just before the exposure finishes. So we've got two flash photos in one image, almost no ambient, all at one at eight seconds. So that's just to give you an idea that you don't need ambient light in an image to get a high speed photo. Well, you don't want any ambient in the image to get a high-speed photo. So what speeds are these images captured at? I'll just grab the SP800 manual. At the back of the Nikon SP800 manual, page 122, flash duration, full power, one thousandth of a second. That's not really that fast for something like a water balloon bursting or maybe a light bulb breaking. At 1 16th output, we've got about 1 11 thousandth of a second. That's what most of my water balloon shots were taken at. 1 16th give me a reasonable amount of power to work with and a fast enough speed to freeze the motion. At 128th output, we've got 1 41 thousand six hundredth of a second. That's how fast it says the approximate flash duration is. So, at 128th power, you can capture a light bulb breaking and still freeze the bits of glass that are moving away. Well, not totally freeze them, they're not all that sharp, but it just shows you how fast it moves when that bulb shatters. But you just have to know the tools you're working with and the speeds you're working with and how you're going to capture your image. What I use, I bought this voice activated kit. The come on a circuit board, you got to put it all together yourself and there's a microphone and battery connection and then the PC plug, the little plug that plugs into the side of a flash when you want to trigger it. On this other one here that I've got together, I've got a solid state relay fitted in here because this came with a normal relay and I want something that switches really faster because a solid, a normal relay still takes a certain amount of time for those contacts to close. And I wanted to switch instantly. 
So what happens is you've got your flash plugged in, powered up, got a power supply connected, flash turned on, I'm at 128th power here, it doesn't matter too much, but we've got a noise, the flash fires. That's the whole principle of the sound activated flash trigger. You have to work around the noise you create to destroy the object, or unless you drop something and it makes a noise that it hits, you can use that to trigger the flash. The next thing is the timing. Now this is the part that's a little bit tricky at first, but once you've mastered it, all you do is you set up your shot and you just take one after the other, fill up your water balloons, hang them up, shoot them, and you know almost exactly where the split is going to be. How do you work out your exposure? Well, you choose your flash power you want, and then you decide your ISO, your lowest ISO. I usually work around F9 aperture, because that normally blacks out most of the ambient at night. And then shutter speed of one to two seconds, which gives you enough time to aim and shoot a water balloon or something like that. So what you do is you put your flash next to your subject. You have your settings, ISO 200, F9, two seconds, push the button, camera goes click, opens up, you clap, the flash fires, and you get your exposure on your balloon. Is it too bright? Move the flash slightly away. Too dark? Move the flash slightly closer. Now, I have a diagram here. Bad diagram. Right, so when we fire the air rifle, we have the sound waves going towards the microphone. We have the pellet traveling towards the balloon. The first time I took one of these photos, I put the microphone underneath the air rifle. I had that balloon right there in front of the air rifle. Shot it, flash went off. I looked at the picture, I had a picture of the balloon. I don't know if the pellet had touched the balloon yet. It might have been out the back of the balloon by this time, but the balloon didn't have time to burst. So then I thought, this is firing too fast. I've got my solid state relay and it just fires as soon as there's sound. So what are our main two variables here? We have our distance from our balloon, our distance to our microphone. Then we have the speed of the pellet and the speed of sound. So what I did is I took my microphone and I moved it about five meters away, did the same thing again, and I got a photograph of just some rubber left behind from the balloon. It happened too fast. So sorry, it, it fired too slowly. So then what I did is I thought I need to be further from the balloon. Because you're close, too close to it, a few centimeters either way, and you greatly change your variables. So if you're further away, a few centimeters of movement hardly makes any difference. So I drew a line, I stood on it, set my balloon up, shot it from there with the microphone one meter away, and I saw a little split. So sound moves in th at 34 centimeters every thousandth of a second. So every 34 centimeters you move it away, you delay the flash going by one thousandth of a second. So after I got my first shot with the flash, with the microphone one meter away, saw this little split, I thought, let's move it another meter away. And I got a bigger split. And then I moved it, eventually I got four meters away, and I had the perfect split all the way to the edges. Now once you've got that, all you have to do is keep filling up the balloons with water and shooting them. Because you've got your distances, you're shooting from the same distance, the microphone's at the same distance, the flash is going to fly fire at the same time. The interesting thing is that I had never seen images like this before. The very first split that I got of a water balloon, I looked at the back of my camera and I thought, there's something gone wrong with my screen. It's gone all crystal-like and 
I'm probably going to have to have my camera repaired. And then I looked even closer and I thought, hold on, that's what a balloon does. As it splits, it pulls up this spray and it looks like a starfish because the rub is tearing away at the water and it's lifting it up as it tears away. And it was really interesting. And that's the great thing about high-speed photography. You don't know what you're going to get. And you, you get these pleasant surprises. I'll show an image here of my background settings. Behind the scenes, we have this plastic milk bottle that I cut in half and put over my flash to protect it from water splashing on it. In that particular shoot, I initially had the microphone too close and I got an image of a pellet touching the bottom of the balloon. So I moved it to the right distance. Next shot was a really nice split. I'm actually quite proud of that one because National Geographic actually paid me to print that one in their book, even though it wasn't my favorite image, but who cares? And then at one stage I thought, okay, I wonder what it's gonna look like if I shoot it from the side. I went and stood on the side and shot it. And I realized I've just changed a variable. I've added two meters distance in that direction and it's split too far. And I need to adjust the microphone to my four meter distance again to get the right split on it when I shoot it from the side. I have some sample images here too of something else you can do when you're trying to work out your distance. You don't shoot the balloon, you shoot above it and you capture the flash. There's a few pictures here where you see the, the image where I tested the flash to check the exposure and then you see an image with the pellet just above it. Because I've just shot above it to see right, is that pellet going to be past the balloon when the flash fires? Obviously when it hits the water it slows down a bit, but at least you know that if the pellet is behind the balloon in your test shot, it's going to hit it before the flash goes off. Another image I tried, I thought, well, let's half fill the balloon, hang it, and shoot above the water. And I got my only vertical split I've ever seen, and I found that quite an interesting picture. You can see in the unedited picture the, another flash behind it, which made quite a big difference. I was trying to forget about just worrying about the mechanical side of it, but get artistic as well, because I get worked up in these photo shoots where I'm, I'm so amazed by the technical aspect of it, I forget to light it properly. In one particular image, I shot a balloon full of food coloring. And you can just, just see the pellet coming out the back. I had to edit it brighter and I just wished I'd put a flash behind it as well. So when you're going to do something like this, set up your lighting properly. Don't get too excited about what you're going to see. Make sure you're lighting it properly when it happens. There's a variety of images here of balloons shot at different angles. It's just amazing the different things you can come up with when you're playing around. You can shoot them from the top. I did a few shots like that and the way the water bounces up when the pellet hits it, it looks like a ship's mast. At one stage, people on the forums were watching these videos that I was doing of shooting water balloons and they said, you know, you should try safety goggles. I said, okay, very good. And I came back and I said to them, just not working for me. <laughs> Another option is a glass of water. You just sound activated trigger, the microphone close to the glass, you drop it and as you get that sound there you've got the water splashing and obviously further you move your flash away to your microphone, it'll give you different effects, different uh, final result of the water splashing. The light bulb photos, um, they were really interesting. I used 128th power for these. And um, it's just amazing the different effects you get from smashing a light bulb. I know we're supposed to be talking about water balloons here, but we're talking about high-speed photography. Something else in interesting about these light bulb photos, they were shot with my Nikon D90, 12 megapixel camera. Um, the crops, I found that shooting wide and cropping gave me more depth of field as opposed to zooming in and then you got less depth of field. It's just better to see high speed photos nice and crisp. So the actual crop of that 12 megapixel image is about 4 megapixels. That's what you can do with 4 megapixels. So 
don't worry about these 45 megapixel and 60 megapixel cameras like four megapixels is is more than enough for most people even though as i say that's a, a crop from a 12 megapixel image i'm saying that like the nikons the 24 megapixel sensors are really nice because they're better in low light that's the main reason i buy them i'd rather have something that's four times better and only six megapixels in low light but you got to take what we get there's a extra bit of effort involved in adding either flour into a balloon or food coloring and you get some really some of them actually quite gross looking images out of them but one particular image i shot the balloon made a hole in it it didn't burst it just kept spraying out of it so i actually had time to reload and shoot it again on the side so you never know what you're going to get at one stage I thought, right, I'm going to get images, gun pointing at the camera, and the pellet coming out the back of the balloon. So I set it up downstairs under our house, and took the one shot, and I liked the way the pellet came out, and I thought, you know what, I want that pellet just whizzing past the camera. And I changed my angle a little bit, shot it again, I just saw the filter go like that. And that was a nice image that came out of it, or interesting. But then a discussion came out of that where I went on the forums and I said, lucky I had the filter there. And someone said to me that front element is really powerful you you're not going to break that front element with a little air pistol so i did some tests i took an old lens autofocus wasn't working and i shot it at the same distance and it just bounced to the side so i thought i'm going to get really close and shoot it right over straight in its face and the pellet slid across the front element jammed in the filter housing filter mount and the lens spun around absolutely nothing wrong with the lens so that brought up another interesting test, and I learned a lot from that. Well, hopefully I've given you an idea of how to do high-speed photography, specifically water balloons. If you have any questions, just ask, ask in the comments below. I'll try and make sure that I answer them. I can provide links to some older videos I've done. I never put much effort into them, but um, I'm trying to make better videos, trying to work more on my audio and um, presentation. But just ask away and I'll try and help as much as possible. All right, Ted, what do you think about my picture? Do you like my picture? What do you have to say about it? Ted's a little bit nervous. He's a rescue dog and he's had a very bad upbringing. So you're in a bit and he's finally letting me carry him without his heart going crazy and hyperventilation. 